Hey everybody, this video is on experiment of cathode rays. By way of review, gas discharge tubes are partially evacuated glass tubes containing low pressure gases, such as hydrogen gas. When a high voltage is applied across the two metal electrodes, the anode, which is positive, and the cathode, which is negative, an electric current can be conducted through the low pressure gas. Gas discharge tubes cause fluorescence, which is the emission of light due to spectroscopy, when the energy from electric current excites the electrons in the atom of gas. When these excited electrons return to the ground state in the atoms, they will produce energy in the form of visible light, and that is what we call fluorescence. Crookes tubes, or cathode ray tubes, are modified versions of gas discharge tubes, in which the gas is further removed to reduce the pressure in the tube to less than 10 to minus 6 atmospheric pressure. When the pressure in the tube is further reduced, the electrons that travel from the cathode to the anode can travel a further distance through the tube as there are less atoms and molecular gases impeding the path of electrons. When these electrons are accelerated due to the electric field between the anode and the cathode, by the time they reach the anode, they'll be traveling with a very high velocity and therefore carry a high amount of kinetic energy. When the electrons travel past the anode and collide with the glass, behind the anode that will excite the electrons of the atoms of the glass and therefore also result in a fluorescence. In the case of cathode ray tubes, most of the time the fluorescence is in a form of green visible light. This apparatus, whereby the production of a cathode ray produces green fluorescence light behind the anode, is commonly referred to as a cathode ray tube. Various experiments involving cathode ray tubes demonstrated properties of the cathode ray. We'll go through each of these experiments and discuss what exact property they demonstrate. The first experiment involves placing a Maltese cross metal plate in the path of the cathode ray between the cathode, which emits the cathode ray, and the anode, which is positively charged. When the Maltese cross is present, a clear shadow in the shape of a Maltese cross is casted directly behind the Maltese cross. And this shadow is outlined by the green fluorescent light that is normally formed behind the anode in a cathode ray tube. This observation indicates that cathode rays can cast shadows and travel in a straight line just like light. And since light is a wave, they hypothesize that cathode rays are also wave in nature. Experiments using cathode rays were also conducted using fluorescent plates. In the cathode ray tube, a long plate is coated with a fluorescent material to help us visualize the trajectory of the cathode ray. In this diagram, the cathode ray is produced on the cathode, which is negative, and travels towards the anode, which is positive. This can be visualized by the green streak of fluorescence that is enabled by placing the metal plate that is coated with a fluorescent material in the background. Normally, the cathode ray will travel in a straight line directly from the cathode to the anode. Experiments using the fluorescent plates were investigated using electric plates and magnetic fields. They observed that the cathode ray is deflected when electric fields are applied or when a magnet is placed nearby. In the top diagram, two charged plates are placed at the top and bottom of the cathode ray tube, the bottom plate being positive, and the cathode ray trajectory is observed to be deflected towards the bottom side, which is the positive plate. In the bottom diagram, a permanent magnet is placed nearby the cathode ray, and as a result, the trajectory of the cathode ray is also deflected towards the bottom. The deflection of the cathode ray in the presence of electric fields and magnetic fields suggests that the cathode rays are charged, specifically negatively charged, because they are deflected towards the positively charged metal plates. Since waves do not possess charge, these experiments support the idea that cathode rays are actually particles in nature. Another famous experiment involving cathode ray tubes is one involving the paddle wheel. A paddle wheel is an apparatus that can freely rotate about its own axis. In these experiments, when the glass wheel or the paddle wheel was struck by the cathode ray, it was observed that the paddle wheel rotated towards the anode. In the bottom diagram, the top half of the paddle wheel is in the trajectory of the cathode ray. It was observed that the paddle wheel rotated on its own axis in a clockwise direction and also moved towards the anode. The rotational and translational motion of the paddle wheel suggests that cathode rays do not just possess energy but also momentum 
as it caused the paddle to move. Momentum also implies that cathode rays have mass and therefore are particles in nature. In summary, experiments involving cathode rays produced conflicting interpretations and understandings of the nature of cathode rays. Specifically, some of these experiments show that cathode rays are in fact charged particles, as they can be deflected by magnetic fields and by electric fields. The paddle wheel experiment showed that the cathode rays carry not only energy, but also momentum. And since momentum is a property of masses, it also supports the particle nature of cathode rays. The Maltese cross experiment shows the wave nature of cathode rays. This experiment shows that cathode rays travels in a straight line, just like lights. It can also cast a shadow directly behind the Maltese cross, another property that light possesses. It was also shown in other experiments that cathode rays can penetrate thin metal foils, which is consistent with the behavior of waves.